This is Dr. Robert Elder. I'm a pediatric and adult congenital cardiology specialist at the Yale University School of Medicine, and I'm going to speak to you today about coarctation of the aorta. Coarctation of the aorta is an important and often overlooked diagnosis in congenital heart disease. The most common site of a coarctation is at the aortic isthmus, or the juxtaductal region. Most commonly, there is a discrete area of narrowing that results in a restriction of blood flow. In fetal life, less than 10% of the combined cardiac output crosses the aortic isthmus since the majority of lower extremity blood is perfused by the arterial duct, which is shunting from right to left. At birth, as the PDA closes, the entire amount of cardiac output for the lower half of the body must pass through the aortic isthmus. This is the area at risk for coarctation. Coarctation is commonly associated with a bicuspid aortic valve in up to 50 to 80% of cases, as well as a ventricular septal defect. When one sees uh, obstruction in a coarctation, one must always be on the lookout for other locations of left heart obstruction, for example, mitral valve disease, aortic valve disease, or even more diffuse arch hypoplasia. This lesion can be associated with Turner syndrome, 45XO monosomy, in about 15 to 25 percent of patients with Turners. The physiology of coarctation is resultant increased afterload on the left ventricle, hypertension of the left ventricle and upper body, resultant left ventricular hypertrophy, and decreased perfusion of splanchnic and lower body circulation. There are two common times to present. One is in infants where they can present in cardiogenic shock with poor perfusion, and the other is older children or even adults who have unexplained hypertension. This difference probably has to do with the degree of narrowing, timing of constriction, and relative development of collateral arterial supply. The diagnosis of coarctation can and should be made clinically. Feeling pulses in the upper and lower extremities can reveal diminished and delayed lower extremity pulses. One might also hear a murmur across the back related to collateral flow in older patients. Management of coarctation depends on the age at presentation. In infants who present in cardiogenic shock, you can use a prostaglandin infusion to relax the isthmus or potentially even open the arterial duct until definitive surgical management, which is usually done via an end-to-end -end anastomosis with resection of the narrowed coarctation segment. In adults, balloon angioplasty and stent placement is often the preferred technique, though surgery remains an option. Hypertension often improves, though this can remain a long-term concern in patients who've had repaired coarctation, and they should have lifelong congenital cardiology follow-up. 